good memory. And hopefully um, the recording will be useful to folks who had to miss this session, but can come to the second one. And I'll be sending everybody who's registered the link to it. Um, it'll be up for two weeks until the second session. Over to you. Hi, Robert. <laughs> Hi there, Jeff, how are you? I'm good. Good. This was the first for us. We have to have dueling Zooms going. Oh, hey, bring it on. We have to think <laughs> out of the box these days. Yeah, I would ask everyone, actually, now that you mentioned that, that having two Zooms in one room, I would mention um, it would be good if everybody that's not speaking would mute okay, and only unmute when you're going to ask a question. <laughs> Thanks. Are you ready, Robert? Yeah, I'm ready. OK. Thank you. I am most grateful to Forbes Library and Faith Ann Kaufman for the opportunity to be here with you now. Much appreciated. I'm Robert Floyd. I founded the Robert Floyd Photo Gallery and Learning Center 20 years ago in Southampton. Before that, based in Manhattan, I had over 2,250 successful photo assignments in the 10 years alone of the 90s. Each one had to be published for Why Hardy Floyd. So I had to imagine what images from each assignment would be acceptable for the reading public of the New York Times, the Daily News, the New York Post, uh, Newsday, AP, UPI. And um, I learned a lot because I had to really understand each newspaper's of subscribers. Um, I visited all the major New York City photo galleries over and over wondering why that particular artwork was on exhibit. They were the only venues for photography and my knowledge <coughs> grew as they expanded throughout the city. That self-taught training was rewarded with my first solo show off of Fifth Avenue in 1977, a treasured highlight as well as Soho Photo Gallery after winning many awards and prestigious outdoor art shows. Since then, I've judged local and national photo contests. I offer private one-on-one -on -one sessions selectively to appreciative artists. I enjoy the one-on-one -on -one process of helping artists find their own vision and sharing mine with them. I've been invited into a vice presidential candidate's home at Thanksgiving. I've been hired to photograph Supreme Court justices, the Empress of Japan, presidents of foreign countries, governors, senators, actors, and sports figures. And I'm leading up to this. My reputation developed as a person of integrity. That, and not my talent, brought me success. So I wasn't a strong artist or a successful photojournalist but I had integrity and that seemed to be appreciated by my clients. Nobody is aware of the path we take to come to our art. They only see our art. Thus it needs to be honest and true to us, actually from Plato. Life gives us choices, defines us by the ones we make. One of my all time favorite quotes from Dale Carnegie, the most important things in the world have been accomplished by people who have kept on trying when there seemed to be no hope at all. So this isn't easy, this process, but the idea is to put one foot in front of the other and keep on trucking, as they say. This is so true. You may be feeling discouraged or frustrated, hopeless or afraid, but never, ever give up. You have a dream, keep going. You will need to learn the things you don't know you don't know, yes, but keep going. And you will succeed. If you quit, the dream is lost. Argue for your limitations and sure enough, they're yours. I urge you to be extremely careful what you say. Your words and thoughts have a huge effect on your self-image, your success, and ultimately, ultimately with your lifestyle. And right now it's more important than ever to be extremely careful what you say because it's so important to remain positive, encouraging, and optimistic. Your family and friends are hearing you. Show your confidence in the future by being positive or at least by not being negative. 
even if you're on the right track, you'll get run over if you just sit there, Will Rogers. Creativity requires courage to let go of uncertainties. Ah, we've all been there. Eric Fromm. I will add, if you wait until everything is perfect before taking action on your idea, you end up never taking action. And that's what I have to keep reminding myself about. Doing something is better than doing nothing, even if the something isn't perfect. The more essential you are to your customers, the more they are going to pay you for what you do. So lean into the skills you have now. Our lack of risk accounts for more mediocrity and awareness and sameness, I mean, than any lack of so-called genius. We need courage to be free of our worry and fear we find in art so often because of its troublesome attachment to our self-esteem and ego. Self-esteem and ego, they rule us. Worry, doubt, fear inhibits imagination. Our imagination like a muscle is capable of strengthening, stretching and growing. Imagination and confidence is our goal. Can we see the slide for the um, outline please? So I've created an outline for us for our marketing your artist artwork under the umbrella of Forbes library via Zoom. You've heard my introduction. Here's the outline. And we'll explore um, five or six aspects tonight and then another five or six or so. Who's counting uh, on the 30th in two weeks? And we have some homework for you. So the first one will be make room to be ready to market your artwork follow up by create an outstanding presentation, then understand your target audience, develop niche markets, price your artwork, and do it now, which will be, um, which will be in our assignment for next time. Um, we'll start off on the 30th, our second session with review of tonight, session one, and then we'll explore your options for art galleries, co-op galleries, magazines, books, art fairs, licensing, and the like. We'll look into strategizing to motivate buyers, obtaining press coverage. Publicity is very, very important and it's free, not like ads. Network and strategic alliances, email marketing strategies, and then to set and reach our goals. Um, that's a lot to cover, but let's start. If you have any questions, why don't you wait? Um, you can put them in the chat room, but after each section, we'll open it up for your questions. Uh, we'll cover some, and then we'll go on to the next section, and we're all done. We'll open it up again, and I invite you all to consider to email me with any question you may have in the next two weeks. I will attempt to address it at the beginning of our second session, and if not, maybe put it in the weekly newsletter I have but I will, I will pay attention to every question. So uh, slide A, please. This is the longest one, so bear with me. This will take the longest to go through, but it's, um, it's important. You need to market properly and position your marketing material on a consistent basis to be seen by the same audience same audience, then you need to keep pushing your freshest work forward. One, to help you obtain more customers in your door who love what you do and are willing to pay your price and who will come back to do business with you again. Two, to help you achieve higher average sales in all your product lines, if you have product lines, often without having to raise your fees or prices. We can raise our fees, but we can never lower them. That's the golden rule. So be careful when you do raise them. To help you be more accomplished in less time so you can run your business instead of the other way around. As artists, we love to create, but we need to be business people in order to survive. Four, to help you improve the quality and creativity of your art, so that it becomes more desirable and valuable to your clients. So when I say marketing campaign, 
I mean, anything you do to promote yourself as an artist. <laughs> this can include blog posts, Facebook posts, pay per click campaigns, hidden web pages, email marketing, joint ventures with vendors, exhibits, displays, anything. Artists traditionally search for ways to let the world know they are creative folks and then market themselves using the same old methods. Time to change the way you think. Now is the time to develop a new creative and effective marketing strategy for your art business. It's a business. And why I say to market your art is artwork. Art's somewhat a nebulous term. Artwork is a product. We sometimes don't like to think of our art as a product, but in order to sell it, we need to position it as an item, as a product. Your marketing has to be innovative, informative, creative, and above all, interesting. It's about presenting yourself in an honest, simple to understand, positive manner that your clients can relate to and be comfortable with. No negative stories on Facebook. And most importantly, it means presenting spectacular art, your best. After all, that's what your prospective clients are seeking, amazing art. Who are you? Understand who you are as a business first, then determine who buys what you want to do. Not everybody's our customer, and more importantly, we are not our customer. Remember that, please. Your marketing strategy will follow. Once you identify who you are, make it your marketing message, slogan, or tagline. This should be a brief, I don't like the word should, this may be a brief description about what you do. Whatever you decide upon, let it be a straightforward reflection of you. Your tagline needs to be concise and consistent with what you are selling. Who do you sell to? Can't say everybody. Now that you have identified who you are, you need to determine who you sell to. This is best done on paper. A successful marketing strategy can only be a single page. This lists the potential clients, not people who knock on the door um, arbitrarily, whether self-generated or purchased is your target market. Do some research, find out all you can about the prospective clients and formulate a database. Don't overwhelm yourself, keep the list small and manageable. A list of about 25 prospects per list is a good number to begin with. The USP, establish your unique selling proposition. This works for artists, this works for photographers, um, artists who are, are doing um, on consignment. Simply put, what is unique about your artwork? Use this, to, use this uniqueness to position your business in the market. What sets you apart? I know one artist, he's a photographer, and he masters photographing Quabbit in the evening. So he's the guru, if you will, about Quabbin sunsets. He's the guy. Um, it is the foundation of your brand. Look at ads and magazines. See how businesses present themselves. Use these ideas as the building blocks upon which you will sell your own unique qualities and talents. You don't have to copy it 100%, but, but get pointed in a direction that is unfamiliar with you now. <laughs> your portfolio, you choose to have a portfolio, images of your art, whether they're paintings or sculpture or paperweights or um, driftwood lamps or, or photographs, artwork, your portfolio for those who wish to go beyond individual sales. When you're choosing images, find unique images that will separate you from the rest of the crowd. I can still remember Mark Majeski's photo of the milk bottle sculpture he presented here about nine years ago. It stuck with me. It is, and he's on tonight with us. 
it is a difficult look at your own work objectively. So ask for help from friends, a portfolio coach, or anyone, teamwork, that might be able to assist you. And be sure to show your prospective clients images that talk about you, not what you think they want to see. I have artists who wonder, gee, what can I create that I'll be able to sell at the next fair? No, create what is driven with your heart. Then present that. Let people see that you're in love with your art. Accept your uniqueness, embrace it, and be as creative as you can, can be. Contact materials, stationery, business cards, flyers, websites. Look at your contact materials. They need to be professionally designed and reflect the quality product you are del delivering. It's going to cost you more money. Grow into it. Don't put something out there that's really cheap. Your, your art deserves something better. Your marketing calendar. After you've pieced this all together, develop a calendar for the implementation of your marketing strategy. Uh, this is the hard part. Will you market every quarter? Every month? Who knows what time is best? This is up to you to decide. Decide what you're trying to say and say it as effectively as possible. Be committed to the image brand you're presenting, be committed to your marketing message, and be committed to your strategy. And you can change it in three months or six months. I know someone, I'm not naming names, we've worked for years, we have a strategy, I turn my back for a few months, and there's a whole new strategy, a whole new universe, not good. There was no plan, it was just off the top of this person's head. And I fear this strategy isn't going to work. It was too dramatic. Um, here's a brief checklist. Who am I? Marketing message. How am I unique? Who do I want to do work for? How will I show them my work? Can my contact materials be better? Are these the most creative images I can show? Who can I receive some unbiased help from? People put things up on Facebook and people, oh, I like it, I like it. Gee, I got 28 likes on Facebook. Who cares? Did anybody buy any of the 28? No. Um, and it's a fault. Never take, never take advice from anybody who's not in a position you, know, you want to be in. Um, the idea is our spouses or friends give us encouragement, but um, sometimes it's which try to try to get into your circle of contacts, people who are objective. And then be, 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 um, be prepared for the consequences. How often am I going to send out? How can I integrate multiple components for a common message? Develop your marketing calendar. Think positively and be relaxed. Look up the word serendipity in the dictionary. Stop planning already and do it. That's the way I've already always done it, is <clears throat> a dangerous strategy. That's the way I've always done it, is a dangerous strategy. So is I'm gonna go by instinct. Eh, don't be afraid to change. Create a marketing plan for better results. Every business needs a marketing plan and artists are no exception. Without one, it's difficult to make the most effective use of your precious marketing resources. A marketing plan links together all your marketing activities to ensure they support your overall goals. The plan doesn't need to be complex to be effective, so it's best to start with something simple. You don't need to list every detail for each activity, but the plan needs to be broad enough to include all your marketing efforts. You want to develop a framework for planning your marketing activities and measuring their effectiveness. There are many types of marketing plans and many ways to create them. The best approach depends on each artist's individual needs. Listed below are six steps that can be used as a starting point for creating your first marketing plan. Define your, I told you this was the longest one. Define your objectives. These are goals that help you define your brand, your market, and your lifestyle. 
they are generally long-term goals that go beyond the annual planning process. You can think of these as the what I want to be when I grow up goals. And all of all your marketing activities, and in fact, all of your activities in every area needs to be directed towards helping you attain these goals. Objectives are usually difficult to quantify. This section of a marketing plan is often the shortest, but also the most important. So identify your market. Who are your clients? Where will your new clients come from? For many artists, identifying their market is not as simple as it may seem. Some potential clients are obvious, but in order to maximize the effectiveness of your marketing, you need to define your market in fairly narrow terms. Not everybody who calls or knocks on the door. You may welcome them, but that's not your market. At the same time, you might also want to expand your market to include potential clients you haven't addressed before. <clears throat> Determine the strategy. What methods will you be using for each of your objectives? If you want to stay in the same path but simply grow your business, you need to either acquire new clients or obtain more work from your existing clients. How will you accomplish this? Activities with measurable goals. This is the meat of the plan. Specifically, will you be doing every marketing activity that requires time and money needs to be listed. Plan the budget. Money. <clears throat> this is the reality check. How much time and money is required to undertake all the marketing activities you've planned? The budget may be as comprehensive as possible in order to give you a realistic image of what it would take to accomplish your goals. The one item that consistently underestimated by artists, their time. It can take over 30 minutes or longer each and every day to make 15 marketing calls per week if you choose to make marketing calls. If you be adding new images to your website or portfolio, you may need to spend hours doing additional post-production work or having somebody do it for you. It's not unusual to go back and reassess your marketing activities and goals once you've calculated their true cost. Review regularly. Look at the plan every month. Make adjustments every three months if needed. Give it a full review and overhaul every year. Go away for a weekend. Unplug the phone for two days and do it. It can be a challenge to find a time to create a marketing plan. If you be writing a marketing plan for the first time, don't worry about getting everything right. Start the process as soon as possible in order to maximize the effectiveness of the marketing activities you're doing now. As you repeat the process each year, we're going to be in this for the long term, you'll learn which information is most relevant to you and the best way to structure it. You also become better at projecting what you're hello, realistically capable of doing and the results you can expect. It's difficult for many artists to devote time and money to marketing. Make the most of it by developing a marketing plan. If you can create a habit of performing and we're done, these three things each day, some for only a few minutes, then you will see your business grow right alongside your dreams. Work on your marketing in some aspect every day to receive new customers. If your prospective customers don't know about you, they won't buy from you. Work on positioning your message out every day, even if it's only for a few minutes. <clears throat> sort of had Ozzy and Harry, parents love them dearly, the best parents. I could ever have. Um, my mother told me once when I was living in Manhattan about announcing I had a business, um, that it, if I don't announce it, it'd be like being in a bar, in a dark bar, winking at someone. They wouldn't know I'd be winking at them. And I couldn't believe my mother would say that to me, but it's stuck. I'm still talking about it. So let people know. Two, work on closing a sale every day, even if it's in your head. Whether you are doing this online, on the phone, 
I closed the sale today. I feel fantastic. It took a week, presented some images to, to somebody I never sold to uh, in Oregon, and it worked. Um, through the mail, face to face, you need to be selling every day. Without the close of a sale, different than marketing, you need to be out there looking for deals. Three, we're almost done here. Contact your current customers. They're your alumni. Don't ever forget about the people that have already purchased from you. These are your best customers. They already like what you have to sell. You don't cost anything to acquire. Contact your current customers frequently, even if you are only saying hello. Send them a birthday, seasonal greeting. They need to know what you have to offer, and they need to know you're still breathing. They, uh, I sent the gallery newsletter. I finally got going week after week. Somebody came back. Oh, you're still there. Yeah, we're still here. We didn't go. Away. <clears throat> they won't seek you out. You must go to them. I'm like close with this section saying, it doesn't matter what a gift is. What matters is what we do with our gift. Creativity without craftsmanship, like a million times zero, it equals zero. Questions for this section? Um, Kate had a question in the chat. I would like more yep. technicalities of how to do what you suggest, where and how. For example, I have a Facebook art site, but no idea how to use it. Well, um, by having an art site, is, is this a, a site like a website, uh, sort of a group website? Uh, if it is, you might want to look at what other people are doing on that group site, not to copy them, but to set boundaries for yourself and to try different things. I mean, uh, post or forgotten. Um, somebody not picking on you, Marty. Somebody said, gee, I haven't seen your, your work. I take that as a compliment. But I have put work up recently and I normally don't. But my point is, once it's up, it's forgotten. Graham, what in 24 hours so you can mix and match until you find something that works and you get more positive response from next if you have a question you can unmute and then robert can see your name at the top i have a phone number one four one three Leonore? Grade six. No, no, I am there with name. Hi. Why would you want, um, do you want me to ask a question? Yeah. I, I can, I wasn't ready really. I I'm was listening, ready. I'm here, go ahead. Okay, yeah, okay, I will make up a question that is pertinent. I am the owner of a Mac, a iMac that crashed on me tonight for the first time, it's brand new but it won't boot up. So I am still having problems to interface with an old MacBook Pro on which I am now, an iPhone and this other big iMac. And I'm struggling with bringing uh, my portfolio into the computer. I have a huge portfolio and it's uh, on the old computer. So this technical integration is a much, much bigger challenge to me than I anything else. I have an answer to your question. Uh, I recommend getting uh, portable hard drives. The price has gone down drastically for, for, for memory. Get a portable hard drive. Don't put anything on your computer. It will slow it down. It may cause it to crash. Store everything on your portable hard drive. Maybe have a backup for that portable hard drive. But I it won't slow your computer down. And you simply can drag and drop to put it on your portable hard drive. Good advice. Although this iMac is empty, there's nothing on there except a few dots. Okay, well, good it, advice. It's rare, it's rare that that an iMac crashes. Um, <laughs> I, so, so. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank okay. you so much for the tip. So. Cheers. Can I ask a question about identifying your market? Yeah. What, what is that like? What would that look like? Okay. Um. Good question. Um, I, didn't any, I didn't give any examples. So the, uh, is your market new homeowners? 
is your market people who have large yards and have gardens and take sculpture and put it on a pedestal? Uh, is 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 this um, you know sports affiliated? So you would like to sell to everybody, but you may have a niche for uh, you may have a market of of a a slice of the population, and that you want to maybe pay more attention to, to gear your email marketing to, your dialogues, thinking. So if I have, if my market is new homeowners, then I'm wanting to go out for a drink with realtors or to get them on the phone. Maybe they can recommend me. Maybe I, and I've done this, I've put artwork up on a house to be sold um, thinking they'd buy the house, the artwork once they bought the house but it made the house more warm and friendly. That help? Next person. Unmeet yourself, you wanna ask a question. I'm not seeing anybody on-, on um... Okay, I, I just unmuted myself. Okay. If nobody else has a question, I want to ask one. I, sure. do, I create large banners of botanical imprints and I have public art, public spaces in mind. I have sold a fair amount to private people through different venues at Leverett Crafts and Arts, but um, I'm really excited about the um, possibilities to create large environmental art that is not purchased by an individual. Have you experience in that? And may, may, yes. maybe, are you covering that maybe? Yeah, we're covering it in the next, but, I, but I'll, 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 I'll show it now. Uh, corporations have money, budget to Ooh. acquire oh. artwork for their building. Corporations, did you say? Yes, okay. corporations, companies, they have money, they have space, they have boardrooms, they need art. And wow. there's usually a person in charge in that corporation who handles it. So uh -huh. call a corporation, call another one, call another one, and then play the percentages. And you may have someone to say, can you come in next week? And you come in with a portfolio or you come in with one of your items and demonstrate to them. And that's how it happens. They can come to you, but you can go to them more quickly and, and more more uh, effectively. I don't have a car actually. <laughs> I have to do a lot online. <laughs> well, okay. you can do it online. You know, I'm, I'm looking at the old school. I'm thinking of how I used to take a taxi in Manhattan. Well, I've been there too. <laughs> I've done yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> or, or we're think, things weren't, weren't so peachy dark, I would walk the couple miles to the client, you know. Right, right. I've been there. Okay. <laughs> Okay, we'll cover that uh, in, in detail next 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 week. Good, thank you. Oh, Robert, I've got a question for you. Yep. Hi, Robert. Um, you mentioned um, the person who, who has uh, um, his unique thing is Quab and Sunsets. Okay, so you have someone who has a specific, very limited area, but he's very good at it. How would you define the market or the customers for that when you have a, oh, such a specific uh i i had an or good question bob i had an organic method for him people show up for the sunset i told them bring framed artwork just simply say hey look what i did you want to let him oh whoa look at that and um he's there anyway and if he sells one a night bingo um I got the idea from someone who was near Cape May, I used to go there quite a bit, Cape May Bird Observatory. And there was somebody on the beach at a tent and he was selling his images, photos as artwork and they were terrible. But through the years, they got better and better until they were jaw dropping. So that was, that was a niche market. That was his market, the people coming in. <clears throat> so that's, that's what I shared with that person at Quabbin. There are other ways to do it. He can go to uh, nature clubs. He can go online. I mean, that's sort of a catch-all. 
but that's a more specific one, meaning we have to think out of the box. Hi, well, Robert. A... Robert, this is a, a hey. go ahead, Faith. Go ahead, Faith. Hey, okay. Barry. Hi, how, how are you guys doing? Uh, for everybody, would uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my, what is it? That was my Siri going off. You said a magic word. Ah. <laughs> so uh, my name is uh, Thierry Borsi, and, and I do black and white uh, digital photography of uh, New England, mostly Western Mass. And um, my question, which is wide open, um, is how do you, uh, what strategies do you use to reach out to art galleries and museums? Okay, we're gonna cover that totally next time. Um, and I'm not gonna go into it now. It's all set up um, as a presentation. But I will tell you, you're, you're, you're walking the walk. You, you were involved in uh, Vermont Photo Center. You were involved in the Robert Floyd Photo Gallery. You also exhibited Mutson House last month. And, and you're consistent in Facebook and then you're only putting up your black and white images and not putting up funny memes and, and, and other things. So uh, we'll cover the next steps, but, but you already plunged ahead and I'm proud of you. I've got a question. Yeah. Um, I was wondering what strategy do you use for um, contacting, <clears throat> contacting a business that doesn't provide a phone number that just has a form? You know what I mean to to get through, and if they don't contact you, is is if they don't contact you from the form, do you just give up or whatever? Well, yeah. At one point, you, you know, think of different ways how to do it. Uh, mail them a letter or a note, a card, just a fun note, not a not a typed, you know, just a just a nice note. Trying to reach you. Here's my number. Um, you know, email, website. They have to have some presence that you can reach them. So that's Thank that's you. what I that's what I would try, yeah. And we yeah it, 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 we have to get away from thinking of the brick and mortar companies. There's a lot lot that that aren't there. All right, let's go to um, let's go to B. I see but, a couple. I see another question in the chat. Yeah, go ahead, Virginia Sandman. That was me. I just asked. Thank you so much. Uh, oh, cheers. We go into the galleries in detail next, and, and I, I have my own method that really I haven't found anybody that does it that way. And um, I, I'm, I'm anxious in presenting it, <laughs> excuse me, together. Um, let me take some water. So we're going to talk about emotional stories. And I believe this is two parts. And, and um, one of the most powerful secrets I've discovered is that emotional stories, when used correctly, can greatly increase your booking over sales. Let me explain in more detail. Human psychology teaches us that people invest in art for emotional reasons. We know this. I've had artists tell me they've lowered their prices by 30% simply to get rid of inventory, it doesn't sell. We've got a 20 year anniversary coming. I'm tempted to give a 20% discount. It won't work. People don't care. Sometimes people invest in art, they don't even look at the price much. They want it, I want it. Emotion sells art. The challenge is that when somebody decides which images they want to invest in, and which artwork at that moment, they're in the left brain, the logical analytical side of the brain. We want them to be in right. The moment you say that's a 16 by 20 or what size, they ask what size it is. You don't have to say 16 by 20 or 20 by 30. You can say that's the sofa photo, meaning that the artwork that goes over the sofa. That's the pedestal in the main lobby of the company. You give them, you want to keep them in right brain. 
once they get it into left brain, I sing this too many times, you, you mostly lose the sale. And it's you no, know, even if they stay there half an hour talking to you, no sale, get out of right brain, it's over. So the emotional, and for those of you who don't believe in left brain, right brain, read the book. The emotional, you don't have to believe in it, but respect it. The emotional, sensitive, excited side of the brain is right brain. And there's a book that came out in the, the early 80s, French book, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. So the idea, if you drew a chair and you don't draw, it would look like any other chair but he drew. But if you drew the negative space around the chair, using right brain, left brain gets confused. What's a negative space? It gets bored and the, and, and the right brain takes over. And the chair is a wonderful representation of the physical chair. One of the more effective ways to help your clients move into right brain is to tell them a short, emotional, true story that they can relate to. And that's going to be your homework for next time. Um, tell them a story. Um, you also um, can tell them, create what's called an elevator pitch. You're in an elevator with someone. Oh, what do you do? Oh, well, what's that artwork you're carrying? Blah, 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 blah for the 30 seconds or so it's gonna to take to get down to the main floor. You basically wanna paint a picture of who you are. You wanna bury your soul, you're an artist, then allow them to invite you to meet or come over to my business or can I come over to your studio or can we talk on the phone or whatever. So that elevator pitch is important. There's also a three minute pitch and that's the one where I don't know if we still go to plays without our mask, but if you sit near somebody in a play and you're waiting for the curtain to go up, oh, I'm Sylvia, I'm Robert, who are you? Well, you don't want to say, oh, I'm Doug. You want to be able to give them a three minute speech. The same thing when you sit on an airplane, give them a three minute thing. Oh, I, was, I grew up in St. Louis. I went to school in the Louvre. I, I played basketball in Rome. I, you know, I'm making that all up. So <clears throat> telling them an emotional story, the 30 second elevator pitch isn't so emotional, but an emotional story is how you created a piece that you created, the experience you had in selling, who walked into your gallery, who walked into a gallery while you were there and acquired your work, something really emotional. Um, and so it's very important to close the sale right after telling a story. Don't tell me your story is unique. No offense, but it really isn't. There are thousands of ramen noodle stories. There are thousands of 3 a.m. Eureka stories. There are thousands of maxed out credit cards. Relatives won't return your calls. Last minute financing savior stories. Your story is deservedly fascinating to you because you lived it. But to the average reader, your story sounds a lot like every other entrepreneur's story, like the 30 second elevator pitch. Claiming your story is unique creates an expectation that if not met negatively impacts the rest of your pitch. And if your story truly is unique, I don't know, you don't have to tell me. Never make up a story, never. It's very important to close the sale right after telling a story. Are we good? Can I walk it to your car? How many do you want? Don't say, you wanna buy it? It doesn't work. It puts them into left brain. You wanna keep them into right brain. Where are you gonna hang it? I got into a shtick at the gallery that I simply challenged them. I really like it. Where are you going to hang it? And whoo, they were they were affronted, and they 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 came back. Well, I, I got room. I could move some. Really, and we went back and forth, and they were solving their own dilemma. Oh, I don't have any wall space. Well, I told people, you take what your least favorite object artwork is, and you gift it to a relative or to a friend. 
I said that on Facebook years and years ago, and somebody came back and cursed me out nicely and said they gifted it to the person who gifted it to them originally, and they lost the relationship. So, true story. You need to differentiate. You need to differentiate yourself from other artists. Don't ever assume that your client will simply be able to see the difference in your work over theirs. Share the differences. What separates my art, what separates um, uh, the artwork from the uh, um, Quabbin sunset is I come here every day. Or the days I don't come here, I'm processing my images. I look at the weather, and if the weather isn't conveniently um, strong for my image, I turn around and go home. Um, what, when I used to do clients' weddings, what separates me from others is that we guarantee 100% full satisfaction or your money back. <clears throat> Share your philosophy. Sell you. So you're not selling your artwork, by the way. Oh, and I can go home. It's all over. Sell your philosophy, your style, your artistic workflow, the lighting and framing, how you capture feelings and emotion, and your passion for your art firm. That is more important than your artwork. Sorry. They want to hear that story. When the, your artwork is is in their home or their businesses, they want to share the story you shared with them, not to ask the people how they like the artwork. I got a call once, somebody said, could you repeat the story? They had a dinner guest and, and they couldn't articulate the story I shared with them. Explain what makes you unique and how you can fulfill their needs. Um, you know, I, I go to your house, I, I, uh, I photograph you, I, I paint your family wherever you want to be painted, you know, really get get or what's what's important about this consign what's important about this assignment consignment um, to you, you want to impress your relatives, you want to have joy, or you want people, um, again, emotion. Okay. Questions. On, on section B. <clears throat> there are a couple in the chat. Uh, do you make an elevator talk for every piece or for your overall business practice? Overall business practice, not for every piece. For every piece, I want something more, more, um, more warm and fuzzy. I, I want that. Let me tell you the story, what happened? Whereas an elevator pitch, I'm this and I do this and I do that. So they're, they're really separate, but I put them under the same umbrella for, for now. And another from the chat, can you give an example of a story that you share about your art? Yeah, you, you, you either tell an experience. Um, when I used to tell is um, Carl Schultz Park. It's the park outside of Gracie Mansion, the mayor's residence in Manhattan. And they they ask 100 artists to exhibit every year. And a couple of times it was me. And I was really thrilled. However, one day somebody starts buying from me and I'm like, wow, I'm selling. And then somebody else near me is buying. And then a third person is buying all in four minutes. This, this, something's wrong. I'm not that good. And what it was, was the clouds, a very dismal day, the clouds broke and the sunlight was beaming down like a movie right on my display, right on my artwork. And I was selling them like hotcakes. As soon as the cloud covered the sun, it was all over. So it's, it's a warm and fuzzy, it loosens people up. It shows you're human. It shows what. And then you can you can talk about um, how somebody came into the gallery and purchased the artwork, and in the, the it was not framed; it was a print on cardboard and 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 mat board, and it bent, and the person was um, I shouldn't be telling the story, but anyway, she was physically endowed, and she took it and bent the bent the artwork and went out of the gallery 
just singing. And it's absolutely thrilled with the purchase. And boy, that made my day. I'm still talking about it. It's going to be at least 10 years. So that's kind of an example. I've got a question. Yeah. Um, I don't really know how to say it. Um, That's okay. So I make I make photographs that are really extremely personal. Uh, I've got emotions coming out my pores on my skin, and I, I don't I don't tell the stories in my public presence. I I, I sort of veil it a little bit. Um, I, and then I found myself, I just sold something and I told her the, you know, the real story. <laughs> and I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, um, I struggle with saying too much, you know, saying stuff that's way too personal. It, it would, it would probably get people engaged, but it's, it's stuff I don't want to share. Do you have any experience with that or thoughts? Yeah, I would, I would tone, I would tone down your presentation. Um, do you have a cat? Yeah, I have a cat. Okay, I would practice on your cat. <laughs> I would, I would, I would take this story that's a little more personal than you want to share, but not all of it. And I would simply practice talking to your cat until uh -huh. you cut it down and you're so relaxed with it. You slice it off. And if uh -huh. somebody wants a little more, you slice off a little bit more. Uh -huh. The other, the other thing is <clears throat> come in from a different door. Don't tell your story. Shh, find out what that artwork of yours is going to mean to them, how it's going to make oh. them feel, how they may relate to it, the energy in it, and that makes it more personal, personable, and, and rather than you revealing too much. Oh, thank you. That's helpful. Cheers. Great. Anyone else? Okay, let's go to C, slide C. Okay, this is a short one. Um, who's your target audience? We flirted with that a little bit. We need more examples, I know. But who's your, your target audience? Is it, is it people who um, spend time outdoors? Is it, is it people who, um, like to travel? Um, is it people who have a lot of free time and want to look at the sculpture uh, in their lobby? And, and is it business climates? Um, who do you expect will have more of a common denominator of the populace? And, and that's your, your target. Um, I have a gallery. I like to think anybody that walks in or the whole world's my target audience. It isn't, and I've learned. I've learned that I have Barry Wenzel's uh, rock and roll images, um, limited edition, when he shot for Melody Maker magazine pre Rolling Stone in the late fifties, early sixties, and <clears throat> mostly, mostly old hippies, like 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 the artwork because they. They, they define their life back when this music was playing and they want one of these icons on their walls. Um, you know, I'm simplifying it. Um, what will your artwork do to benefit them? I talk a lot about nature photography here and the healing effects of what it does uh, when it's hanging on the room um, <clears throat> versus, I don't know, a photo of a building, nothing wrong with that. Um, but uh, the idea that that artwork is healing, we have proof of that in the 20 years of the gallery. We're quite proud of it and it makes people feel better, uh, gives them a little lift in their step. Um, we're going through a pandemic. They're staring at bare walls, may as well stare at something that's uplifting. And what specifically have you done to make a difference? <clears throat> that can be in your approach to your craft. That can be how you donate your time, teaching others, um, sharing what you know. Um, we work with Westfield High School um, and we donate thousands of dollars of equipment that other people donate. And uh, we've invited 
some of the young women for a 20th annual Women in History contest and exhibit next month. All women are uh, asked to submit a photo and this prize is $300 or so to first place. And it's our way of celebrating women and having younger women submit images, who knows, they may become portrait artists, they may go to art school. Uh, so it's a way for us to give back uh, to the community. So why, what's your creative purpose? Are you creating art because you can, or are you creating art to, to balance your, your life? Um, what's your creative purpose? What's your mission? Um, the gallery has a new theme for next year in social justice. We are having a contest ending in October for Kestrel Land Trust. Uh, we're inviting everybody to go to their properties and photograph landscapes, critters, and people using their properties. We want to uh, appeal to um, uh, people of color, to diverse groups. We want to make Kestrel more successful. Um, that's, that's, that's our mission. Um, so how is your value proposition, your target market? Again, getting back to who, what, why. Uh, this is the heart and soul of your marketing operation. No matter how good your art, your marketing collateral, you won't be very successful unless it gets to the right people. Creating a database of contacts is easy now. The challenge is to maintain it, keeping it up to date with useful information. Be sure to record how you acquired the contact, note the materials they receive from you, and enter a quick summary of any conversations you have with them. It's time consuming and not what most people would consider fun, but it provides you with critical information about whom your marketing material is reaching and helps you identify your most prospects. <clears throat> a lot of people come through these doors and I forget names and they're wearing masks and who the heck are they behind the mask? So once I pick up a name and um, I'm talking eek, nobody needs to know this. I run into the other room and I quickly take out my, my iPhone. I look up their name and I go, Oh, Dorothy. And I go back, I go, how's Dorothy now? I hear that she had moved to England the last you were here. Oh, you remember that? Well, eventually I'll remember it, but I didn't remember in the first minute we we're in the gallery. That helps people relax. They don't feel like they're intruding. Questions on this? or questions on anything so far. Uh, Robert. Yeah. Uh, would you say that, um, I've never actually sold any art cards, you know, like um, greeting card type things, uh, art cards. But I was thinking, um, do you think that like selling art cards to various places could be a good, uh, way to get people interested in uh, buying bigger images of yours? It does work. Uh, you can go to uh, gift shops and, and art associations and you can leave your cards on consignment, but you need to check in weekly. They have a tendency not to send the money into you. Cards get damaged, they get stolen. Um, my philosophy, listen to this, is never show a, on a card your large artwork because they can buy the card for three bucks or five bucks. They don't need to spend $400 for the frame artwork. However, they get associated with you. They read something about you in the back of the card. They get to see your name. And when you're being at a gallery, they see a gallery listing, oh, hey, I got a card from him. I wanna see more of his work. We see that all the time. <clears throat> we used to sell cards here, but then again, somebody's walking out with $12.85 of cards and not a $300 artwork. And so, um, and there's a difficulty in cards. I knew someone who had 500 cards for inventory 
and the person's past retirement, still sending out cards. So it's not profitable. I would say that it's it's not it's not for everybody. Um, that you might be better off spending all that time and energy and money into marketing yourself another way. Mm -hmm. That's your end goal. Show them what you want to sell. You're showing them a card. You really don't want to. You want to be selling the artwork. Then show them the artwork. Go to restaurants or go to stores and say, hey, um, a quick example, uh, we work, photo, uh, a clothing store, a, a boutique in Manhattan, photographing a kid wearing their clothes, putting in the window, uh, selling portrait photography, but showing a kid with the store's clothes. You know that there's other concepts, but that's the one that comes to mind. Anybody else? Unmute yourself. I have a oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I've been speaking a lot. All right. Speaking of cards, um, I did a number of business cards a long time ago. I, I do abstract watercolors in these bottles up here. Um, and I found that I put some two, like th six different pictures of bottles on a card. Um, and then just one on another one. And then I had a card in my watercolors um, and they were like, you know, bigger cards. People love the cards, but I think it was exactly what you're saying in terms of they put them on their later told me, oh, I remember you. I have your card on my fridge, yeah. but I never got any work from that. Yeah. So I wondered what your idea. For, I never sold them, but for business cards, I wonder what your idea was. So they they might have an image, but okay. um, I. I only did weddings for clients. Yeah, and I, they forced me to be the best wedding photographer in Manhattan. Otherwise, I lose the client. And so Geraldine Ferraro, that's the person I was in at Thanksgiving. And so I had to be good, really good, quickly. And I went to a, a conference, I'm leading up to this, and Gary Fong, the guru of wedding photography, had albums because he worked with um, Art Leather. He had 40 albums on all these tables in this hotel. And I stood on the end and I watched people. People flip, you know, just flip, flip and it's intermission. When there was one photo, an eight by 10 per page, they stayed looking at that photo. When there was multiple photos on the page, they flipped it over, they flipped it over, they flipped it over more quickly. Wow. So if you're doing a card, one image per surface whether it's a greeting card or a business card, one image, not little ones, they, they can't look at it. So if you're gonna use an image, one image per card. Thanks. <clears throat> I like the bottles. Oh, thank you. <laughs> They're hard to market or people love them when they see them, but then everything you're saying, I, I guess I, I've done so many things you're saying, it's following up on doing them and doing them and doing them, I guess. Okay. Um, yeah. I have I have a I have a comment. You wouldn't sell them as they are, but since you're using that as a Zoom background, I would take out every other one, give each one more breathing room, more space. Because when you we we can hang 55 artwork. There's three <laughs> behind me, Julius Lester. We can hang 55 in here. People walk in, they walk out. Ugh. It's like museum overload. Oh, I, I, I want to buy, but I don't know which one. So less is more. So okay. position them with space. And then the next time you position them, you might want to put different ones. But my recommendation is mm. to give them breathing room. Because okay. it's like being at the Grand Canyon. Where do you look? <laughs> yeah. OK, thanks so much. Cheers. <laughs> OK, so. I got a uh, question. Yeah. Are you going to cover reproductions? Somebody gifted me a broad, a wide format, fantastic Epson printer, one of those um, economy printers. Yeah. I have used it a little bit. And my images lend themselves very, very well for reproduction. I have never done it for business, but I have been at events where artists sold 
reproductions, a lot of them at crafts fair for as little as 15, 20, 25, 30 dollars, even with frames, and they always kept the original. To, 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 and I've done this. To be at a craft show, you're going to be at the one the day before and the one the next meet week, and you really have to schlep a lot. Yeah, they do. Something that price. I mean, when you, yeah. and it costs money to get into the show and then renting the car and then, you know, all that and the meals and, oh, please. And, but the ego, hey, people said they like my work. Um, no, 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 but uh, they sell online too. Well, that's yeah. a different point. That's a whole different point. So uh, we will talk about that next week, but do bring it up if I cover it. If Reproductions, I, okay. Yeah, please do. Thank um, you. So let's go to slide D. There's not much time to spend on this one. A niche market is a narrowly defined group of customers. We talked about this earlier. That can be defined as having a need and targeted as a market sector. A business that focuses on a niche market is addressing a need for a product or service that is not being addressed by mainstream providers. <laughs> I'm making mm -hmm. up an art form, um, driftwood with seashells glued to them. Well, you know, companies aren't going to get into it, but wow, I got, I, 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 I can get driftwood. Well, I have to drive to the uh, coast of Maine to get good driftwood. There's all my mileage and my gas. One of the advantage of establishing a niche market is the business channel may not be very crowded and other businesses may not be aware of your niche. Um, the, the artwork in the bottles, I don't see a lot of people doing that. So that would be a niche market. Mm -hmm. um, further, the larger business may not want to bother with it for all reasons. The key to capitalizing in a niche market is to find or develop a market niche that has customers who are accessible, is growing fast enough, and is not presently owned by one established vendor. So what is your niche market if you have one? You want, I want you to spend some time between now and, and next week, our next session. Any questions? <clears throat> All right, let's let's get into E slide E. We're going to spend some time here. Pricing your artwork. The challenge you face as an artist is to know how to correctly value your artwork. Many artists and, and my reaction to selling things for 15 bucks that probably could sell for 30, 35 dollars somewhere else. Um, many artists price their work emotionally and consistently. Galleries can't sell wrongly priced art. I have photographers who have their images too low. We can't make a commission to gallery and at the same price they're selling it. So I no longer can sell their art unless they raise their prices. Um, galleries can't sell wrongly priced art. Worse, nothing will betray an unprepared artist like not knowing how to price their work. Many artists mistakenly underprice their work. They do this because they feel they are not established. They do it because the local art market won't sustain higher prices. They do it because they lack confidence in their work. It's not the price that matters, it's how you present it. Let me tell you a story from Mentor. His words, not mine. I'll never forget the day many years ago when I was meeting with a couple in my studio. When we came to the part about my fees, I pointed to 30 by 40 over the sofa and said, that size is 1750 and pointed to the next size down. But they interrupted me and said, 1750, let's see. So with tax, that's about $18. And they were serious. I said, no, that's 1750. With tax, that's about 1800. They went crazy yelled, screamed, swore, and stormed out of the studio. It really upset me, but I got over it. Never ever lower your fees, even if someone screams at you. What you do is very special and not everyone is gonna be willing to invest what you're charging, but many people will as long as you put as much effort into your marketing and selling as you do into your art. Mm -hmm. If two thirds of the people uh, this is, well, actually, it's, it's my mentors. 
if two thirds of the people you come in contact with are not complaining about your prices, your prices are too low. Yeah, you want to lose two out of three because the profit, the money that you get from the one third more than covers it. So mm -hmm. if no one's complaining, I remember a manager once called me in on the carpet said, nobody's complaining about you. Oh, I stuck my chest out, Floyd, you know, proud. Oh boy, Leo, you know, yay. He said, you're not doing your job. I didn't hire you to be liked. I want people to complain. This was in procurement and engineering design. So I, I appreciate the concept. If two thirds of the people you come in contact with are not complaining about your prices, your prices are too low. The point here is the temptation can be to lower your prices and that's dead wrong. By lowering your prices, you send a message to your potential clients and yourself that it's all about being the cheap artist. Remember, there are always people who are looking to invest a little more for something truly special. You must create value above and beyond your art in service to your target market and sell that. You must know thyself and communicate who you are and what you stand for and what you stand against. Instead of giving advice on how to price your work, we want to look at it another way. How will your clients value your artwork, your services? Do you research so you're in the ballpark? Put it in perspective, perspective of the buyer, and alignment between the seller and the buyer. Everything you hear is an opinion and everything you hear may not be a fact. Be comfortable with what you're doing. Context, where are you showing your artwork and promoting it? What are your goals? What stage are you in your journey? Who are you? Create a folder of 10 artists similar to you or to whom you aspire. See what businesses they are doing starting with pricing. Reverse engineer their pricing strategy. If they're selling at a gallery, 50% goes to the gallery, they're getting 50%. What's the cost of what they're doing? Work backwards. Permissible and advisable to create an objective, simple, consistent squareance rule. Uh, what's his name? Um, he used to be in Amherst and he went to Northampton uh, about 18, 17, 15 years ago. He sold by the inch <laughs> per square inch. Higher price for smaller. So if you're selling small lease, then it's more money per inch. Otherwise, you're practically giving away. And for larger artwork, wall size, it's 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 lower price per inch for the larger. Uh, that is one strategy. But don't have confusing price and strategies. Remember, they're buying the artwork for those of you hanging on the wall, uh, not the size of the paper it's printed on or painted on. Press needs to be consistent, not to undermine your galleries. Give a gallery the same negotiating limits you give yourself. Don't give away value or devalue your efforts. Sell, prime the pump. Hey, I'm psyched. I sold today, I sell tomorrow. I got one. <clears throat> not that I need it, but hey, reality. Constantly move forward. Everyone has a different tra trajectory. Don't let what is in your wallet affect your presentation. If I just paid my car insurance and somebody walks in the gallery, say, hey, I'll give you 70%. Uh, no. Rather than, yeah, sure, what the heck, a sale's a sale. So don't let your wallet affect your presentation. And it will, I know. Always position to sell your costliest artwork first. Most artists make this mistake and it bugs me. They put on their websites, although I don't look on websites, <clears throat> four by six, five by seven, eight by 10, 11 by 14, 16 by 20. And then finally, when you get down to the 20 by 30, yo, you can never sell it. Position your biggest artwork, your most expensive artwork first. Try to sell that. Then the next one, then the next one. It's a, mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, it's, it's, it works. It's, it's fantastic. That's really great advice. Oh, it, believe me, it's night and day. Um, I, used to give, I used to give away 
a four by six of at, at assignments. And I was in a black tie world of a story of Giuliani, who's all these Italian couples from Brooklyn, they'd given me the cards. And like an idiot, I'd send a 50 cent proof in the, you know, with the note, never heard back from them, never. Yeah. So I took this lesson and I wrote them and said, I have a fabulous image of you and the mayor and eight by 10 costs so much, five by sevens cost so much and four by sixes cost. $92.50. I still have their note, $92.50 for a 50 cent proof that I would give away. And if I told them how much a four by six costs, they would, okay, I want that. Or if I show them a four by six in a studio, that's what I want. So there's something called projecting portraiture on large 20 by 30, 30 by 40, and a bare frame canvas over a couch, that's $4,000. And then you work down. Um, whenever you are selling your work, have a showstopper. Make that the first one. Technically impressive and a big ticket item. I once did it for selling weddings to clients. Um, a carriage in Central Park, bagpipers, so you're going to be crazy to buy this, but it positions package B and package C is overpriced. So I want people to buy package B. Somebody buys package A, my mouth dropped. I got the check on the spot. That package became package B and I created a bigger whopper for package A. I am more money. Is that going to be a problem? I bought my clothes at Bergdorf Goodman. I was better dressed than my clients. And the salesperson would say to me, how much is that? Is that going to be a problem? Huh? No, no, no. Can you hold them until I get the money though? And, and it actually went down in price in the closet and they lowered the price by $300. Anyway, um, I did a sample artwork name, Sunset, Arizona, generic material costs, a print 50 bucks. Artwork selling price, 150. Artwork profit, 100 bucks. Framed artwork cost, oh, 125. Framed artwork selling, 400. And my framed artwork profit is 225. But I had to invest $100, uh, $125 to make $125 more profit. Hey, what's going on? You know what? I've got to raise my framed artwork selling price or I'm not going to sell framed artwork anymore. I'm only going to sell prints. There is a quick and dirty example. So if you're the driftwood person, driftwood lamp, material cost, zero. I get the driftwood from the beach. Yeah, well, guess what? All that gas, the main and back. So this is something I want you to do for your artwork. I want you to see what your gross profit is, not the amount of time or energy you, you put into your work. Okay, the next one is, oh, I know what I did. Go ahead with the next one. All right, so the next one is do it now, create an action plan. Your goals need to be smart. So I borrowed this from somebody, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, timely, you know, not two years from now, shared with someone else, you know, just get it off your chest. So I want you to set your goals for the subjects that we covered, pricing your artwork, developing a niche and the like. And do you do it in 30 days or do you give yourself a break and do it in 90 days? or to give yourself a break and do it in six months, but actually write it out when you're going to do these five concepts. And that gives you a plan. Well, I don't have to do that for, for 90 days, but I have to do this for 30. And you can get more optimistic and do it in weeks, but you know, let's, let's, let's give yourself some breathing room here. So this is all that I have to present for today. Um, I'd like you to do your homework for next time. You'll be more prepared. We've got quite a lot to cover next time. And in the meantime, if you have any questions, email me them. My thought, plan A, 
is to get answers and to provide them for everybody um, in the 30th, the next time we meet. If not, I may put it out in general concept in my weekly newsletter. And by the way, my gallery um, website is floydgallery.com. <clears throat> and speaking of investing, it's a $14,000 website. I could buy a car for that. But I thought at this point in my life, I have to go with the best. I can't, I can't do second best. I wouldn't advise it for anybody. I have no regrets. And it's, I can rock and roll in and I can do much more than I'm doing now. I plan to get more into video, but that's my story. Let's hear some questions before we go home. Oh, you're you already home. I'm the only one who's driving. <laughs> how do you spend fourteen thousand dollars on a website? Sorry. Going, how do you go? How do you spend fourteen thousand dollars on a website? That all go to the designer, or it all goes to the designer. I fainted. Wow. I had progress payment. Oh. I bartered. I negotiated. I think twenty percent was an artwork that I had in in the in the gallery, and that was a thrill. Um, but I. I realized they were the best. And anyone rural intelligent, you know, that newsletter, same designer. Um, and I realized that was what I needed to aspire to, that the <laughs> the website would make me make me work harder, that it had my back, and that I wouldn't stumble with, gee, I needed to have invested more money. So it's it's Robert Floyd Gallery slash, what is the website? Actually? No, it's, it's floydgallery.com. Okay, thank you. The business is Robert Floyd Gallery and Learning Center. Uh, floydgallery.com is, um, huh? is, is the website. I'm going to go there right away. Oh, good. And Any your, your, net, your newsletter. Oh, that... well, you can you can subscribe, I believe, and and, and we we send it out weekly, and I'm quite pleased at the newsletter. Um, and, and here's another thing, and I'm probably going to cover it next week. Um, and I'm going to show you examples, and 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 Martin and Deb part, partook in this at least, and I don't know who else is on here, but when you have a what salutation in your email, you know, sincerely, Jennifer, um, I use cheers, Robert, put down. Um, every, every, every home needs an artwork or every home needs my fancy bottle, put something down and send it out. And so people see it and see it and say, oh, they're really serious about their artwork. They're putting their information. And I have four emails. And one of them is the gallery, the email, the Instagram, the Facebook address, but the Floyd photo at iCloud.com, I believe is, you know, an artwork for every home. That was the mob guy in, in Florida that, that said something silly about, you know, his portrait in every post office or something. Uh, <laughs> the guy, famous, you know, thief or something from yesteryear. So I tweaked it. And that tells people, okay, this isn't an official business thing but by the way i'm a photographer i'm in business i'm going to change it uh, just because it needs changing but i have people fight me oh i can't do that for my friends you're not taking yourself seriously you're an artist oh but i don't want to impose believe me they're not going to read it after the eighth time they're going to get so used to it but it 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 sends a message yeah. that you take yourself seriously. In Canada, they give grants out and they give grants to filmmakers, but they have to provide 50%. They have to put the color of their money up. So if the grants for 50,000, they have to put 50,000 up, which seems to work. Oh, I'm confused for what? In can put put it for up for what? In Canada? Yeah, we just talked about signatures that are a slogan at the at in our emails. So what are you now talking about? Oh, I am talking about something completely different. Involvement, letting people know that you're in in 
you know, how's it going? Oh, all right, I had a bad week. You know, how's it going? Great. I did a new artwork. I put it on a pedestal. It looks fantastic. And then if you want to invite the person, fine, but report in on what you're doing. I would do that all the time. I've gotten away from it. I would tell them about a workshop. I would tell them about this. I would tell them about the artwork I sold today. Just simply talk to biz. That's what they want to hear. Live it. Yeah, okay. I just got confused about in Canada with the 50%. Yeah, I, that's, that's my personality. I jump from thing to thing. So yeah, you that, do. <laughs> okay. I get into non sequiturs, sorry. Anybody else? I think they said eight uh, I'm afraid yes. I get a hook to pull me away. Um, th this might be a legit question or it might be my attentiveness, um, but could you go over what you said the homework should be? Oh yeah, the uh, handouts that you have where you can fill in something and ask question marks, fill them in. So mostly every handout has something that you can actually fill in has empty spaces, what is your niche market, for example, pricing artwork, um, how to plan for 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. So every handout that you receive has, has a request from you to, to provide information. And it's kind of to hear yourself think, because we're really not asking uh, you to send it in, but you might want to share it next week with us, next um, two weeks. Yeah, I'm signing off and going to another Zoom call. Thank you so much. Oh, good for you. Bye. Bye-bye. See you next time in a brand new show. <laughs> Absolutely. I hope I'm finding my way around my desktop here. Ah. Okay. Just it was, to know it was wonderful. Oh. Thank you, everybody. Sorry. Cheers. Just a note for everybody, there'll be a new Zoom link for the second session, and I'll send it that day around noonish. So if it doesn't uh, show up and it's not in your spam or somewhere else, um, email me, I'll send it out again. But it will come the day of the workshop. Thank you. And for you, is that I saw you were recording it. Is it available to listen to after the? So fact? thank you for asking that. Um, we'll get the recording um, link sent to you as well. We'll send it to everybody that registered. Oh, so, and it'll be up for two weeks. So um, if you want to review it before the next session or if um, someone um, signed up but then couldn't make the first time but they can make the second time, um, you'll all get a link for that. Wonderful, thank you so much. Uh, Faith, I'm I'm I'm, a little, I'm curious about um, how many people were here tonight and um, what kind of art is represented? Uh, is it uh, obviously there's photographers, there's painters, and there's sculptors? Can you do you have any information? Um, no, I didn't uh, gather the information about what sort of thing. Just all I got was the email addresses. Um, we had um, the most we had at one time was I think 45, 46, but I think that um, in terms of people coming late and dropping out and coming back again, there were probably 50. We had 91 people sign up. And when we did this in person, um, uh, as Faith uh, said uh, two years ago, uh, next week, uh, we had 45 in the audience. And the range of art was incredible. They were five foot clay sculptures hanging from a wall, outdoor art, um, um, uh, different, different media, uh, photography, um, oils, uh, acrylic. One person shared that he had 800, I still have his form, he had 800 um, oils, 800 uh, canvases in storage, and he never sold one. So the uniqueness is unbelievable. Can I ask a question? Yes, this is, Mark. This is Mark Majeski. On yeah, we, we, we know you from your flag, the Haydenville flag. <laughs> On page C, number three, your unique value proposition. Is that, does that mean why my work is of value to the customer? I don't understand. Which, which form is this? Page C. B Under or C? C. C. Understand your target audience. What is your target audience? Yeah. Um, 
your unique you know, value. Are these, are this homeowners are these people looking to um, you know what's what's what separates them from the masses. But I mean, on number three, uh, unique value proposition. Oh, oh, I see. Why is why my work is a value to the buyer? Is that what? That yeah, means? well, we talked about uh, different ways, but but um, certainly, I, I don't want to hear that that it it it's um, it matches their their furniture, but okay. that it 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 gives them a talking piece. Uh, it gives them healing energy. Um, you know, it, it makes their environment. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Cheers. I had one more question. Um, I wondered what you thought of, uh, I agreed completely about the pricing because I've noticed for myself that if someone really wants it, it, it makes no difference. Well, maybe not no difference, but it's, it seems like the people who want it cheaper are not going to buy it anyway. That's been my experience. But I wondered how you felt in terms of like donation for like auctions and stuff, if that was a good way to get seen. It's a great um, way. And what most people do is they provide their damaged artwork or the artwork <laughs> they can't sell. And uh, we've all done that. Um, but the idea is to give out your best artwork. Because when you do receive it from the auction or you bid on it, you're very impressed. So uh, East Hampton has the, um, I can't think of the name of it. Um, it's the Center for um, uh, Disabled People. Um, um, they have a big auction every year. And I used to donate to it. But yeah, that's a great way. And very quickly, um, I don't know, you have 25 of your artwork behind you, you can bring 20 to a table and put a price tag on it. But I would recommend put only 10 and raise the price. Mm. Supply and demand. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Cheers. And by the way, your hood gave, gives this atmospheric presentation. <laughs> Because you don't want to, you don't want to um, overwhelm them. You don't want to put it all out there on the table. It hurts, but you, you, you want people to make a decision. But if there's four, three artworks to decide from, and you only want to buy one, you're going to walk out. Not, I've had people walk out knowing they wanted to buy, invest in the artwork, but there were too many decisions. So the idea of the handouts is to get you thinking, to challenge yourself. You don't have to fill out every one, but um, have fun. You know, don't make it serious homework um, or don't wait to the night before. Uh, although that's when everything will be razor sharp and, and you have all this adrenaline. I, I know that a lot. Um, but this is marketing. This isn't selling. Selling is a whole different bag. Um, this is marketing, this is promoting, this is constantly being on. What can I do today? I feel like my, my audience is probably artists. Okay, artists. that's great. A they, lot of them don't art. have any money, but. Okay, um, that's, yeah, that's, that's wonderful. And maybe, uh, you know, as Theory asked, you know, what, what, artists, what type of art is being represented tonight, maybe you have niche in that overall umbrella of artists. You know, are they sculptors? Are they, you know, painters? Are they photographers or ceramics? I mean, what you might want to look at, see if there are subsets. So I think um, any questions that you still have, um, email them to Robert at um, Floyd at FloydGallery.com. And I like your idea about um, what kind of artwork you do. And I think we'll just start the, the next session with um, an invitation to put that in the chat so we can all see what each other is doing. Great. Um, and thanks so much for coming. And I will send you a link to the recording. Good. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, Robert, and thank you, Faith. Thanks, Cheers, Robert. Mark.
Good seeing you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.